Well, hello and welcome back to the Rescue Saga workshop. And this week we're back at the Toylander One project. This build series is now in its 19th episode and the Toylander is really taking shape. This episode is mostly going to focus on the windscreen. I built the windscreen assembly a couple of episodes back but I've been struggling to get materials and so on with lockdown to get the actual hinges built. And I also struggled as to how to build the hinges themselves. But having made contact with Toylander themselves, I finally got some steel, some gas for the welder. In this episode, I'm gonna make the hinges and fit the windscreen, do all the final adjustments there. Doesn't sound like a huge bit of the project, but I think it's gonna make a big visual change and make it much more like an original Toylander. Unfortunately, I'm still waiting on paint. With social distancing rules, the paint booths for making custom aerosol cans are closed, so I still haven't got enough paint mixed in order to finish painting the bonnet, but that will come soon. So without any further ado, let's get back to the Toylander 1 and get this windscreen fitted. Okie doke, so we're picking up back where we left off. Um, I finished the last episode 18 and I was in the midst of making the non-moving part of the windscreen hinges having already finished the moving part of the windscreen hinges. So now I need to drill the holes here and here. I'm going to use the little template to mark that and then what I need to do is weld them to this bit and if I can sort of demonstrate I still need to do weld holes sort of in this face but those are going to sit roughly like that welded from the inside so you get a smooth outside finish um nice thick mild steel so it should be a dream to weld haven't done any significant welding recently so we'll need to take a little bit of time just to set up the welder but it should be good fun to get it set up again so a couple of holes to be drilled in these and a hole each to be drilled in those and then a bit of welding and get them primed painted and fitted to the toy lander once those are on, then it's a case of putting the windscreen, which is stored up there, on, clamp it all up, make sure it sits nice, I think it's at five degrees, 15 degrees, I need to double check, sits at 15 degrees to the bulkhead, and then clamp it all up, drill, mark, and screw it together, just so it sits nicely. And then I have another little idea for the steering nacelle here, which still isn't screwed on, um, but I'll talk about that in a little second. So one thing at a time, let's get stuck into these windscreen hinges. Alrighty, so this is the pre-welding setup. So I've drilled the hole here and according to the plans I've got all this lined up and I've clamped it. Um, so I'll be welding up these two holes and then I have it clamped in the vise just to hold it steady. So I'm going to need to get the welder set up now, puddle weld these two in so there's nothing visible from the underside and then repeat the process over on, where is it here, the other hinge here. Started using a um, bit of this is silicon spray, WD 40 type thing as a lubricant when I'm drilling through the steel. Really think it helps, and I think it probably keeps my drill bits a bit sharper too. But probably need to invest in a new set of these soon enough. I've had these for a while. Let's get this welded. And there you go, fresh welds, so fresh that they're still smoking. Really quite pleased with this actually. Managed to get the weld settings right straight out of the box. And um, this will just take a little bit of grinding to make that nice and flat. But as you can see from underneath, good penetration through the other side. Um, didn't blow any holes, although it would be difficult too with pretty much a hobby welder and steel like this, but very pleased with that. Um, so that's one hinge, fabrication pretty much finished, just needs paint. And let's do the next one. Now before I do the next one, you're probably wondering why I didn't video that. That would be quite good video content. I'm not, I film for this channel using an iPhone and I'm not really sure how that would agree with my phone and I really would rather not damage the camera so I didn't want to chance it if maybe other people know better but I just didn't want to take the risk so I'm afraid that's why I didn't video it but let's get the other one set up clamped and welded next and there you have it a second hinge still smoking maybe the welding slightly nearer this time but that good thick steel is a real pleasure to weld so this part is actually still quite hot. Um, this one's going to be roasting, so I'm going to wait for these two to cool down. Always having to remind myself that they are actually mirror images of each other and not to do something stupid and make the same hinge twice, which would be all too easy to do. So let's get those cooled down. We'll grind these wells flat. I'll probably just file them, to be honest, um, because I don't want to start the grinder up in the garage and 
potentially damage something with the grinding spark. So get that done and then degrease them and then get some paint on them. All very exciting. So on to the next stage with the hinges and here they are getting a bit of paint. Um, they've had two coats of the acid etch primer and now they're getting some of this which is just wheeled silver and this is sort of what I've been using for other bits and pieces. Um, although these are slightly newer tins and I'm wondering is it slightly lighter but it's more of an aluminium colour and I'm happy enough with that so two coats of this, turn them over, coat the back and then a bit of lacquer. And good news from the paint shop is that they've finally been able to put an order in for some colour matched limestone paint. And the paint code for this one is RAL1015 if anyone's interested. Um, so then hopefully we'll be able to get a bonnet painted and really make, start making some progress getting the front end back together. All very exciting. So this is a little change I was talking about with regards to the steering nacelle. Um, it's not necessarily as per the plans but looking at the original Land Rovers um, these little steering covers were clamped around the column and did well sort of to hide this bit underneath. And it's not really the most attractive bit underneath, so if I can hide that too, I'll be quite pleased. So what I've done is I've notched this. I just marked, marked it out around a washer of a similar diameter to the column and I've just filed it out in a notch. So it will just sit slightly back so it doesn't mark the paint. Um, but I think it just looks nice. Um, and a slightly better finish really. Um, so we'll get that screwed in once I have windscreen and all set in there um, but just something a little bit different. And what I'm going to try and find is a little say 1 in 76 scale Land Rover Series 1 in limestone just to screw onto that just as a finishing touch because I like little miniature versions so if I can have a miniature version of a miniature version in the toy lander I think that'll be pretty cool. Just waiting on the paint dry on these hinges and then we'll get some lacquer on and get them screwed in. Okay, so a bit of a tangent and true to form in this channel, one step forward, two steps back. I've come back to the windscreen as you'll notice, um, and I've removed the center pillar and I've had the perch specs back out again for resizing, mainly because you'll notice there's a little bit of movement here and that's because this bit, the perch specs, which you're gonna have to take my word for it, is too long for the space. Therefore, whenever this clamps down, it rises up there and it's just going to annoy me and it's not going to look particularly tidy. So I've already had the perspex out once just by flexing it up in the middle, it pops out of the retainers on either side. So I'm going to have to take it out and file off a little bit more down the uh, cut edge of it. It's a little bit hairy in case it cracks and I'm back to square one because it was a bit difficult to cut, but worthwhile getting it right the first time. Because I know fine rightly, once it's fitted, I won't want to take it apart and do it then. So. Let's get on with that and get the windscreen back together, ready for fitting. And at long last, after multiple coats of colour and lacquer, we have the non-moving or the fixed windscreen brackets um, on the body. And these are put in with a stainless M6 um, 25mm bolt and some nice nylock nuts and some nice uh, stainless washers. So all nice and stainless. Obviously this couldn't be made in stainless. I don't have the ability to weld that sort of thing and the same on the other side. So the next step is to put the moving brackets in here. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to make this work. I have to figure that out. Um, I have these sort of... Oh, oh, it's good and smooth for camera. Um, I have sort of these short bolts of one of those and I have a big long one. Um, these were meant to be for the steering column but I might trim this one short. Um, and use that because it's not actually a bad looking thing um, and I don't really have a huge number of M6 bolts otherwise to start chopping them down um, so maybe try that but let's have a think of a neat solution and this is the next step in windscreen fitting um, I have the hinges loosely bolted together tight but not too tight otherwise they won't hinge and then I have clamped the upper part of the hinges to the frame, make sure it's all nice and square. Um, it's not entirely sitting on this bit, which is uh, at the correct 15 degrees, but without major modification, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna make that any better. See, it sort of sits on the upper part of that panel um, on both sides, which is a bit of a shame, but 
Um, I'm not entirely sure how to make that better. Better, I might be able to shift those back slightly, um, and their hinges. But at the same time, if you shift it back too far, then these holes here are not going to be able to drill through um, all that well. So let's have a little look and see if I can do some adjustment, then get some holes drilled and fitted. And this is the next step of the windscreen fitting. The holes are drilled in the windscreen frame. I had to slightly enlarge those holes in the ends of the uh, brackets and I have the rivets just sitting there. So now I'm just going to use my pop rivet tool to pop those rivets out and then next thing will be to trim the coloured bracket that sits underneath just because the rivet heads obviously file into the panel here, so the little notch is going to need cut out of this, so just so it can slide in, and then there'll be a little retaining screw just drops through there. So, nearly finished with the windscreen, and I think it's going to be a real key piece of the build. And then this is the last bit of the windscreen construction. I have notched those parts of the board, slid them in there so they clear the inside of the rivets, and then I've also drilled these two holes, both sides, and countersunk them just to put a little screw in there to retain this piece of wood. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's going to look pretty smart, so let's get those two screws in and we'll go from there. And I can only apologise for the tumble dryer going in the background, but Mrs. Restasaga says it's not to go off. So here we have the complete, at last, windscreen assembly. Um, in terms of these bolts, I trimmed those down and filed them so they're sort of a more uh, neat size. I've also put a little screw in here to retain this bottom board. Um, as you can see, there's a nice consistent shut line across there, although this panel should sit flush to this one. don't really know what's happened there, but it looks okay. Nice and straight across here. Also, you may be able to note that I put these little um, catches on. Those came from Toyland of themselves, so they couldn't get a nice, neat solution. So they are released very easily. It's down like that. Take it around this side and do the same here. And then without too much difficulty, the windscreen can be folded forwards. And I've just put those gloves there to protect the wings until the bonnet's on with a spare wheel, and then the windscreen will fold flat down onto those. So that's nice and neat. Next thing really is going to for the dashboard is going to be the grab handle, which still has to be fabricated. I'm going to order some steel probably this evening. I also need to get a dashboard and put the steering nacelle on, but I don't want to put the steering nacelle on until the grab handle's on, just so I make sure nothing fouls on anything else. Um, so it's just going to be stored down there in the meantime. Also got a little idea, I think that brake pedal's probably about the same size as the throttle pedal on the Morris Minor, so I might be able to get a little rubber topper for that. So very glad to see that windscreen fully operational. I'll pop it back up again. Nice and smooth. Put the little catches on. You'll note also put a lock, um, a nylock bolt on there, and these are all stainless, of course, and it's just to make sure that this doesn't work its way loose. And I file the edges of that bolt down so it's not catching any little tiny fingers. I'll put this catch up here. There we go, and it's nice and solid, no rattling. So very pleased with that, and I think it really. Sets off the toy lander, but it's that bit of an angle there that you're meant to have. I think it's about 15 degrees they ask for. So, really looking pretty swish. Now, let's get on with something else. And really, these are going to be the next bits of this project. Um, this piece here is a template to make a bracket for the grab handle, which goes along the front of the or the inside of the bulkhead. Um, just uh, around the steering nacelle and the whole width of the vehicle. So I've ordered a steel bar and I'm going to make this out of the rest of the steel I used for the windscreen hinges and this is the starter handle bracket uh, reinforcing panel for the bumper and I've also ordered enough steel for the bumper and all the angle iron for that too. So next really episode is going to include cutting out the metal for this and fabricating those bits and pieces which are going to make a big visual change to the toy lander. I am quite enjoying this steel fabrication, being able to weld good thick steel that isn't blowing through like lace like the Morris Miner did when I did that. So I think we'll leave that video here. Next week, or well, not they say next week, next time the toy lander appears on the channel we'll be doing a bit more fabrication, welding and taking you through those steps.
So that's really where I'm going to leave this video off. I really hope you enjoyed it. I think we've made a really big change to the Toy Lander this week by fitting that windscreen. And I'm sure you'll agree it is starting to look like a miniature half size to uh, Series 1 Land Rover. If you're enjoying the channel, please consider contributing on my Patreon page, and the link is down below. Hit the subscribe button, that's free. Give me a video a like and fire me a comment. I reply to all my comments, compliments, suggestions, questions. I look at them all, I read them all, and I reply to them all. You can also find me on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook. You can follow me across all the channels, and I like to give you little uh, different bits of update. I personally like to thank I Met Aquatics who support me on my Patreon page and I really do appreciate that. So if you want to contribute, do consider joining him there on that page. So once again, thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you again next week. Cheerio.